How you doing? I'm Callan and this is Slapped Ham. Today we're looking at some terrifying cursed items you should avoid at all costs. But as always, before we dive in, remember to hit that subscribe button for more creepy content just like this. The grave super complication might just be the rarest watch out there, but buyers should be warned, it comes with a storied past. The most complex watch ever to be assembled by hand, the Graves Super Complication has long been coveted by watch collectors around the world. Therefore, it's no surprise that the reappearance of this watch at an auction in 2014 drew in potential collectors from around the world, willing to pay a large amount of money for this gorgeous watch. While it's no surprise that watch aficionados would seek out an impressive watch such as this one for their personal collection, it is surprising that they would continue to seek it out after its bloody and torturous past. It took years for the watch to be perfected for Henry Graves, who went on to claim that the watch brought him nothing but bad luck. Shortly after receiving the original watch, the owner's best friend died, followed closely by his son dying in a horrible car accident. Graves would even go so far as to confide in his daughter that the watch brought him nothing but trouble. However, the watch would continue to be handed down through the Graves family after his passing, eventually landing in a museum, where it would catch the eye of one fine art collector. This collector would turn out to be one Qatari Sheikh, Sud bin Muhammad Al Thani, a man with an eye for fine art known for his extravagant purchasing sprees. However, trouble manages to find even the richest of us all. In 2012, the Sheik's assets would be frozen by the High Court of London over several disputed invoices. In order to settle his debt, the Sheik would resort to selling a few of his prized possessions, namely the Graves Super Complication. It seems the Sheik's plan would have come to fruition too, with the watch set to pass on to its next owner for millions. Only the Sheik wouldn't be so lucky to see the watch switch hands to its new owner. The Sheik would be found dead after attempting to sell the watch mere days before the sale was finalised. As the Sheik found out the hard way and as Henry Graves himself went on to admit, the Graves super complication is proven to be one of the many cursed items out there, set to bring pain to those around it. Just letting you know, today's episode's powered by the amazing game Raid Shadow Legends on mobile. You've probably seen Raid Shadow Legends all over YouTube, but what actually is it? It's an epic dark fantasy RPG that lets you collect hundreds of champions and fight it out in strategic turn-based battles. I've just hit level 24 and have 40 amazing champions in my index. Just look at the crazy level of detail of some of my heroes. I've got orcs, dark elves, lizard men. The game is absolutely free to download. It's recently launched on PC too with crossplay. There's a rich story campaign to play, but my favourite is smashing on in the online battle arena. The devs have also added a highly anticipated feature called the Battle Pass. This allows players to win awesome new rewards like gems, upgraded artefacts, and new epic and legendary champions. So what are you waiting for? Download the game, it's absolutely free. Use my special link in the description box below, and if you're a new player, You'll get 100,000 silver plus a free epic champion, Light Swan. While some cursed items seem to have their own horrific agendas, others seem to house otherworldly spirits. Unsure of their intentions, seemingly only the bravest of souls would risk owning such items. As is the case with items such as this beautifully ornate mirror, put up for sale on eBay by user Brendan Temme 1979. Titled The Haunted Spirit Mirror, the mirror's current owner assures potential buyers that he's communicated with the spirit of the mirror in order to uncover its true identity. As the item's description states, the spirit that inhabits the spirit mirror is one who died in his middle age at 58 years old. Mo was an Australian man who died of a heart attack in 1998, mere decades ago, and has allegedly somehow become attached spiritually to the mirror. While many haunted items may assert that their spirits are older, there's no rule stating they can't be more recent. 
Those brave enough to find out Mo's true purpose as for haunting this mirror will find it up for sale on eBay for 500 Australian dollars. The seller of this creepy and cursed doll, Aunt by Marcia, seems to be somewhat of an expert in the paranormal. They seem to be well acquainted with haunted and cursed dolls. As the listing states, the seller believes some spirits choose to inhabit dolls such as this because they may have had an attachment to them in life. This eerie looking doll was said to be purchased at an estate sale near the now defunct Vermont State Asylum for the Insane. As the original estate sale seller explained, the doll was found by her grandmother, a former nurse who had worked at the nearby asylum. The doll had been allocated to a box she had used to store up the personal items of some of her former patients, sadly passed away from botched lobotomies. Even at the time, the nurse could tell there was some sort of unsettled spirit present in many of the items. Some believe that after the patients died, their tortured souls were cursed to inhabit items found around the hospital. The way in which some patients died was allegedly so horrific, their spirits would imprint themselves into some of the dolls left lying around. This doll in particular had come to the asylum with a woman who had gone insane after the passing of her daughter, who had died of natural causes at a young age. Even throughout her time at the asylum, the woman had heard the doll singing, just as she heard her daughter sing in real life. Some attendants even claim they saw the doll moving on its own. Passed down throughout the family, this eerie doll is now up for sale on eBay. Is this doll cursed, possessed, or a combination of both? The only way to find out is to buy the doll, which at the time of researching this episode is selling for $99. When it comes to cursed items, some have passed so horrific that no one will take a chance on personally owning them. Such is the case of the Conjure Chest, the product of a horrific act of creation. The chest has been at the center of further evils ever since. Created by a slave at the request of his slave master, Jacob Cooley, the chest was originally meant as a present for Cooley's first child. When the ornate chest wasn't up to Cooley's standards, however, Cooley would resort to murdering his unnamed slave in cold blood, brutally beating him to death. Vowing to avenge this horrible act, the other slaves owned by Cooley took measures to ensure that Cooley would never enjoy the resulting chest with his family. In order to curse it, they spread dried blood from an owl over the chest, enlisting a conjure man's help in forming a curse. It appears that the measures taken to avenge the slaves' wrongful murder would go on to work their way through Cooley's family for generations to come. Cooley himself would escape death at the hands of the cursed chest, but would suffer a fate in many ways worse than death, having to watch members of his family fall prey to the curse one by one. The chest was first placed in the room of Cooley's firstborn child. Just days after being born, Cooley's son would meet an untimely death. Moved to the room of Cooley's second son, that son would go on to be stabbed to death. Eventually handed down to Cooley's third son after he reached adulthood and settled down with a wife, the conjure chest would be hidden away. Fully aware of the deaths associated with the chest and unwilling to take their chances, the chest was placed in the couple's attic. The chest would stay there until Cooley's youngest daughter and her husband began to face marital tedium of their own. When this news reached Cooley's third son and his wife, the couple wished to bring some small joy into the younger couple's lives. As they had owned the chest for years without experiencing any tragedies, the couple had come to regard the chest as powerless and sent it the young couple's way in an effort to bring them some cheer. However, within days of the chest's arrival at the young couple's home, the husband of Cooley's daughter would abandon his wife. Leaving her destitute and alone, Cooley's daughter would shortly die of grief in her own bed, the husband who abandoned her dying shortly later. The orphaned children were split up amongst the remaining surviving Cooley family members. One of their daughters, Evelyn, would go on to have a happy marriage of her own. The curse of the chest, either forgotten or no longer taken seriously, the chest was given to the family as a wedding present. While no tragedy would befall the family for years, the family would place the wedding dress of their adopted daughter, Arabella, in the chest. Arabella's husband would die shortly after this, 
as would their child after its baby clothes were placed in the chest. Tragedy after tragedy would continue to strike the Cooley family until Evelyn would go on to take her own life. Inherited by Virginia Carey Hudson, a firm denier of the curse, tragedy would strike another family. Placing her family's clothes in the chest as well, Hudson would suffer the death of an infant, paralyzed child, abandoned child bride, and another son's stabbing. Even a family friend who had placed his clothes in the chest would die shortly after. Hudson would go on to break the curse through an elaborate ceremony, and the deadly chest would remain locked away in the vaults of the Kentucky Historic Museum in Frankfurt, United States. Before we get to that number one spot and take a look at a 200 year old chair that's said to curse anyone who sits in it, remember to hit that subscribe button and turn on channel notifications. That way you'll be updated about all our latest scary and creepy content. The Balleroy Mansion in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania is a sprawling 32 room estate long rumored to be haunted. Eerie happenings have been reported on the property for decades. When the Easby family moved into the manor in 1926, George Mead Easby and his younger brother Stephen were playing by the fountain in the courtyard. It's said that they were laughing at each other's reflection in the water when suddenly Stephen's reflection turned into a skull. George's remained normal. Just five years later, Stephen died of an unknown disease. Since then, it's been alleged that the spirit of young Stephen haunts the estate. One day, a young servant witnessed an enormous portrait of Stephen fly off the wall and land some 15 feet from where it was hung. The rope that was used to fix the painting in place was said to be still intact, and no sign of interference could be found. Some years later, a pair of workers, one named David Belts, claimed they were working in the garden at the rear of the house. The workers spotted a young blonde boy that looked very similar to Stephen, staring ominously out of one of the upper windows of the house. When both workers acknowledged the boy, he slowly vanished right before them. One of the most infamous rooms in the mansion is known as the Blue Room. Inside the room is a 200 year old blue chair known as the Chair of Death. The chair's origins are mysterious and jumbled. Said to have been made by an evil warlock in the 18th century, been owned by Napoleon, and be haunted by the spirit of a woman named Amanda, the rumors surrounding the chair vary. It's said that anyone who sits in the chair will die painfully at the hands of a mysterious red mist. At least four people have died shortly after sitting in the allegedly cursed chair. The Easby family have forbidden anyone from sitting in the chair, fearing more blood will be spilled at the behest of the curse. The estate was once open to organized tours, showcasing the many antiques harbored within the mansion. However, in recent years, the house has been closed off to the public. No one knows for sure if the chair of death still resides in the house or whether young Stephen's spirit continues to roam the halls of this old mansion. If you want more stories about curses, then suss that video on the top there. Otherwise, there's a paranormal playlist there you can binge on for hours and hours. Leave us a comment down below and hit that thumbs up button. And that's it for me. I'll see you all next time. 